up in after the tributes, Martindale. As fine a host to us as he is an employee to the Department of State. How long have you been on the Personnel Security Board now? Since its inception, sir. Uh, Marshall appointed me in 48. Oh, your methods of identifying anti-American sympathizers have resulted in the removal of thousands of security risks. <laughs> You're on the front lines of the new war, Martindale. Oh, and don't feel like I'm ignoring your contributions, Mrs. Baxter. Your efficiency is absolutely essential. It is the intention of our higher-ups, Jack Purifoy, Secretary Atchison, uh, President Truman, to expand our scope beyond just communists. There are other security risks within our ranks. Carly, no. What kind? Please. Persons vulnerable to blackmail, drunkards, loose women, general moral turpitude, deviants. Oh, I'm not sure I should be hearing this. Oh, it's a harsh reality, I know. We are no longer living in the simple times we once took for granted. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by deviants, Mr. Sanderson. Oh, I wouldn't expect you to, Mrs. Baxter. It's unfortunate that you and Martin Dale will soon be well versed in their behaviors. I speak of Gentlemen who prefer the, uh, company of other gentlemen. But, sir, I work in personnel. I'm no analyst. I wouldn't begin to know how to check for a mental deficiency. Oh, but you have an excellent eye for detail, Martindale. And there are clues. These perverts have a certain carriage, a demeanor. They read motion picture <clears throat> magazines, attend the opera. So we interview every fellow who's been to the opera? Our show is Perfect Arrangement. It takes place in the spring of 1950 at the beginning of the Lavender Scare. So, Mrs. Baxter, you and Bob are going to save America from perverts. Fancy that. That is what Bob and I do. You look for communists, not homosexuals. Well, apparently now we look for homosexuals and drunks and whores. Goody. But how can you... Millie is not even worthy of discussion. It won't happen. How do you know if it is Because gonna... Bob designed the system. Now stop worrying, both of you. <clears throat> The Lavender Scare took place during the McCarthy era. The government decided that they needed to go after the, the homosexuals and the loose women, the, the people who might be moral deviants and cause trouble within the country. Simplicity, babe! The more elaborate the story, the harder it is to keep afloat. That's what you always tell me. I tell you that because you're truly quite terrible. <laughs> Bob Martindale, are you having man sex in our house? No, no, that was me walking through a door. I know it's all a bit foreign to you, but man, sex looks totally different. Mm, that's it. You two are like children. We're getting a plastic cover. Bob, oh, about what Sunderson Not a concern. We have the I got a promotion. It's good news. Same money, more work, playing more police, some promotion. So, what criteria do we use? Just the obvious queens like Truett Sharp and the real tramps like Barbara Grant? The show starts off as a slapstick comedy. It just draws you in with a, a little giggle here and there and, and some wonderful characters that make you smile. Because you're amazing and I love you. <laughs> Boys, go home. We can take a hint. Sisters of Sappho wants to be alone. Uh, try the sofa. It's easy on your back. I didn't burn that sofa now. Get out of here. We have dishes to do. Good night, girls. Good night, Bob. Good night, Jimmy. In perfect arrangements, there are two, what appear to be two heterosexual couples, which are actually a lesbian couple and a gay couple living next door to one another. But they've created this arrangement for their own safety. They live in adjoining homes that actually are connected through the closet. Normie, what's the matter? I just... Yes, Kitty. Why is Normie in the closet? That's a very complicated question, Kitty. It touches on a lot of issues that people are still dealing with now. And uh, it uses humor in order to introduce these issues and, and these situations and these people who are in a, a difficult time. I'm concerned, Bob. There's no reason to be perturbed. When the department first started rooting out communists, there was only a few dozen very obvious sympathizers. We've been careful. We've had over four years without incident. But circumstances have changed. No, they haven't. That's the sort of thinking that causes trouble. 
We know how to get around the system because we created it. The whole thing's blown up, Bob. McCarthy's made it his personal mission. No one's taking Senator McCarthy seriously. The newspapers certainly are. Newspapers don't set policy. Are you sure about that? The issues that are introduced in this show are things that people are still struggling with now with being who they are, with, with coming to terms with where they want to go in life, and what the expectations are of them from other people, from parents, from society. So this show opens doors for the characters. Say whatever you like. Lie is what we do. It's all we do. What has come over you? You want to keep Millie's picture on your desk, Bob? Go right ahead. If I have to throw a my darling Jim to the girls at the coffee counter once in a while, no real harm, but lately we're living the false in full time and it's exhausting. We don't even get to have the real relationships we're supposed to be protecting because we gotta be show ponies for the safety and comfort of people we can't stand. Mr. Martindale, forgive me. You look so familiar. Uh, have you ever seen the girl in the ads for luster cream hair shampoo? Billboards were everywhere and in Life magazine. Yes, I have. Well, I look a lot like her. Bob, asking questions that are none of your business is your business. Answer me now, or answer my concern when I file it on Monday. I'm not a switch hitter, Barbara. I tried a little something when I was very young, just once or twice and never again. Well, once means just me. Twice means more than me. Oh, Bob, darling, I'm so sorry you have to hear all this blue talk. I think the audience can learn some valuable lessons about not allowing other people's stereotypes or expectations dictate how one lives one's life. That you don't have to listen to what other people think you should do. All right. Barbara's already under investigation. She can provide evidence that you were a student of hers, but that's the extent of it. Besides, the men on the security board barely believe that lesbianism even exists. In their mind, it's not sex if no man is present. <laughs>